So what we decided to do was to look at ourselves, so the Burnside area of Christchurch, and welcome to Silka. This is what it looks like. All right, the resources that are available, um, we looked at oil and coal as useful minerals. They, they're useful things. And just like wood and aggregate and cement were used to build something permanent, that's a lot different than, than taking the wood and putting it through the fireplace, right? If you have a valuable resource and you wanna use it as an investment in, in permanence, that's, that's one thing. If you wanna just flush it through your system and into the air, that's something else. So we didn't say you can't use coal and oil. We said they're valuable materials and they're used that way, all right? Um, biofuel, we did a biofuel assessment and um, we found how much um, agricultural resources and waste resources would be available in um, the, the greater Canterbury region. And it's a good, good bit uh, less than what we're using now, something on the order of 5% maximum. That would be uh, replacing um, a lot of the export dairy industry with biofuel industry. So um, if you think about that scale, that's what we had to work with. That, that yes, it's possible to make liquid fuels from biomaterials, um, a trickle essentially compared to what we use now. So things are a little different. Um, renewable energy, okay, how about, a, how about wind and solar and hydro? Um, yes, and, but there's not enough, um, there's just no way that a bad, the area that we singled out, um, we went to the anthropology department at University of Canterbury and said, what defines a community? And they said, oh, that's easy. A community is self-replicating. A community is educating its young to be itself. So it's based around um, people who educate their young together in the same way. Well, we have high, Burnside High School here. So we decided to take the Burnside High School zone as a community. So we've got Burnside High School, Cobham Middle School, and three elementary schools in that zone. Um, and somewhere between nine to 10,000 people live in that zone. And nine to 10,000 people turns out to be the size of a town where you will find um, a library and an art center. So once you get 10,000 people living together in some way, they, um, they have enough productivity to have a bit of high art, to have um, some interesting things going on. So that seemed like a good enough size of, um, of a community. And the design, what we did was we looked to every house we have um, on a scale map, uh, actually a scale um, uh, model, um, the schools, the destinations, where could you go in there, an inventory of the services and markets and employment that are in that area, um, we calculated all the travel distances that people now go to from there, um, from that zone, and we calculated in that area what, are, what is all the land that's paved, what's built on, what is actually soil, and what are the nat natural areas in that zone. And then we said, okay, well, there's a certain population that needs to be within um, 500 meters of most of its destinations. So it's not a very big group of population, but people who are maybe elderly or disabled or something, they have to be close to what they need. And then um, there's, uh, so they have to be close to, and so if you make a big list of the services that people need and the destinations they go to, there's a, there's a certain population that needs to be very close to those. Then this is um, one and a half kilometer radius. The majority, a uh, very large number of people, um, one and a half kilometers. Anybody have an idea what, how long it would take you to walk one and a half kilometers? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 20, 25. 10. 10 minutes. 20 minutes. One and a half kilometers? That's a mile. <laughs> no, two is a mile. No. <laughs> But anyhow. <laughs> Oops, the Americans' brains are seizing. What's a kilometer? <laughs> All right, well, we've scoped it out because on our team we had a, um, an expert in human mobility and, um, and human-powered vehicles, and he says someone in good shape can walk a kilometer and a half um, in under 10 minutes. <gasps> no, no way. <laughs> 
Point six well, two, a kilometer is what? Miles. It's, it's a thousand two. meters. It's a thousand meters. Point six two plus point three one. Five minutes. I mean, no, no. Uh, uh. And I want to know who this person is. <laughs> and the average person walking at a stroll would be about 15 to 20 minutes. So. Yeah, that's yeah. more like it. So that's a, that's a comfortable walk, right? That's more like it. And on bike, you'd be looking at nothing, right? Five minutes. Yeah. All right. So, so within one and a half kilometer radius, if, if we put this radius on every house, what we need is um, about 85% of their activities to be within that distance. Um, and then they wouldn't really need a vehicle for, except for the other 15%. So if you think about uh, how you would do that, you go around to every house and with a computer you can sort of crunch through all this. And what we found was that we actually had to move some services into this zone. There wasn't anywhere to work in the zone really except the high school. There were a few dairies. There was one supermarket um, over there. And so we had to move some stuff into this zone. So to do that, we had to move some houses. So the houses that were in these two areas, um, we made into high density um, housing. So apartments, condominium sort of thing. And, uh, and they went around these, these edges. So that's where the people who need to be close to things are. All right, we also added in a lot more sort of cafes and small businesses around. And then um, this radius from this house is a five kilometer radius. So that's about a 15 to 20 minute bike ride. Okay, so what you can see is that this area where about 10,000 people live is a completely bikeable area. And nobody in that area would know that. <laughs> They wouldn't have a clue about that, except the few people who already bike somewhere. All right. So, um, so do we really need cars in this zone? Well, there's a, there's other places. Christ Church is a 15-minute bike ride that way from my house, which is right there. <laughs> so yeah, we you know we we've got other places to go, don't we? Well, what we found is that there are some things that we probably need motorized transport for if you're moving a big thing. Right? It'd be good to put it on a, on a delivery vehicle and move it. Um, emergency services, you know, you don't want to have to carry people on piggyback. And then um, public transport interzonal. So if you think about this place, which is totally bikeable, mostly walkable, as a piece of, its, of a, a city, a piece of an urban form, and from that piece you want to connect to other pieces, then that's where the public transport goes. It doesn't go door to door exactly. All right? Um, then, like I said, 95% of the activities that you would ever do are accessible in your zone without motive power. Doesn't mean you don't go somewhere else, but you don't have to. You have the option of not going. All right, 95% of goods and services that you would need are in that zone. And 85% of the employment is available in the zone, because that's one of the major trips is, is going to work. Well, how do you do that? Well, again, um, the first transformation is that we had to take out um, all of the fences. I don't know if you, you've been to Christ Church. Mm -hmm. We put in the houses, but we didn't put in the fences because we didn't have that much uh, little material. There's a, there's a high privacy fence around every one of these houses, in the front, too. I was thinking about it the other day. Why, when you drive around Christ Church, is it ugly? Because you're just looking at people's fences. You know, they got these lovely houses back behind these fences and, and walls. And there's no way that we could get that radius. You know, here's this nice radius. It's only, you know, 500 meters from there to there. And yet to get there, I would have to go like that. I'd have to walk a kilometer to get 500 meters. My children um, go to this school, and we live right here. And they have to go out here, around here, and then down there when they could just go there. So this was one of the first urban form changes, transitions that had to happen was the fences had to go. 